Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory unto the Most High God, Yahweh. And I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Christ Jesus. It's your brother Washani with the church of WFI Little Rock. Coming back with another quick lesson through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. Now, I'm going to be going into, you know, are you sincere? Right? That's what the spirit, you know, came upon me to do. You know, are you sincere? Because that's actually what the Lord is looking for in these last days. You know, there's a lot of our people who are becoming hip to this knowledge and to the truth. And what do I mean by our people? Well, I'm talking to you so-called black, Hispanic, and native and Seminole Indians, right? In particular, you are our people, the Israelites, the children of Israel. And a lot of our people, like I said, are becoming hip to the truth that we are the children of Israel, right? The true people of the Bible that we are, the Jews, the Hebrews, right? But a lot of our people, even though they're hip to this information, they haven't taken the next step as far as keeping and applying the words that are written in the scriptures, right? Because the Lord, he requires us to do something. His love is conditional, right? His gift that he's going to give his chosen people, which is salvation, it is conditional. You have to do something in order to receive the kingdom of heaven. And what he told us to do is to fear him and to love him with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to keep his commandments and his statutes, which is for our good, as it's written in Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. You know, but again, like I said, a lot of people, they have yet to take in that next step, even though they'll openly acknowledge the fact that we are the Israelites that they're from the tribe of Judah, right? Or that they're from the tribe of Levi or whatever the case may be. They haven't taken that next step. But just knowing that you're an Israelite is not going to get you saved. Just knowing that you're a Hebrew is not going to get you into the kingdom of heaven, right? So let me let me start with the book of Joshua. You know, um, and, you know, it's, it's just an amazing thing that we're able to apply these commandments in the land of our captivity as it was foretold that we would be doing before the Lord comes and redeems us. That's why you see me right now, you know, pitched in the tent because we're in the we're in the, uh, the midst of the Feast of Tabernacles, man. You know? But let me start with the book of Joshua, chapter 24. All right? This is the book of Joshua, chapter 24. In verse 14, so Joshua chapter 24, and verse 14, and it reads, Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. So it's time to put away the gods that we've come to know in America. And what I mean is, you know, these idols, the things that the that this world, that America has taught us to love and to serve and to worship and to praise and to give all of our time and access to, it's time to cast those idols and those gods away, man, and serve the Most High, right? In sincerity and in truth. Now, it's going to take time. You're not automatically going to stop you're going to put down the blunt and go in your backyard and pitch a tent and keep the Feast of Tabernacles. You're not going to automatically get off the pole and put on a dress, right? But the Lord is looking for those who are going to serve him in sincerity and in truth, meaning they are putting forth an effort to get rid of those gods and to start serving the Lord. Yeah, you might not get off the pole and immediately put off the dress, but you got off the pole. You might not Put down the blunt and go pitch a tent and keep the feast of tabernacles, but you put down the blunt, right? That's what the Lord is looking for. You to get rid of those gods and start trying your hardest to serve the Lord, man. Right? Let me get another scripture real quick. Because what does it mean to be sincere, man? The Lord said we have to serve him in sincerity and the truth. So real quick, I'll just look up the definition, the Google definition of sincerity, right? Just for edification's sake. Sincerity. So sincerity is the quality 
of being free from pretense, deceit, or hypocrisy, right? Some synonyms is genuineness, honesty, truthfulness, good faith, integrity, right? So meaning you truly want to serve the Lord, right? You, you, you genuinely want to do what is right in the eyes of God, in the eyes of the Most High, right? That's what it means to sincere, to be sincere, right? We have to really, really want to serve God in these last days. We have to really, really want the kingdom of heaven. We have to really, really want to be protected and saved whenever all hell starts breaking loose, man. And you do that by start applying what the Lord told you to do. In good faith, you're, you're trying, man. You're putting off the things that God doesn't want you to do. And what's that take? You seeking God. You seeking the Lord. Understanding his will. And what is his will? It's the things that he told us, man. Right? So, let me get a scripture real quick. Because like I said, it, it takes time. Yeah. It does take time. Me personally, it's, it took a long time for me to start applying the scriptures but i knew i was a hebrew israelite you know and everybody's differently but i know for me it started out with the pork you know i put down the pork hey man and i ain't picked it up since man because the lord told me not to but in the in, when whenever i put down the pork i wasn't just you know i didn't care I, I put down the pork because god told me to put down the pork and while i put down the pork i was seeking the lord i'm having the audio bible playing I'm following along. I'm reading the laws. I'm learning, man. You have to learn about the Lord. Let me get... I was going to get a scripture. Let me get this other scripture first real quick. In the book of Isaiah. All right? Because, man, look. Hey, the Lord is going to send you side back, man. To save those who serve the Lord in sincerity and in truth. That's why Shai said in the parable of the, of the good and faithful servant, Hey, well done my good and faithful servant right because the good and faithful servant was trying to do anything that he could do to serve the lord right but look not to not to get too far off the path this is the book of isaiah chapter 55 in verse 6 it reads seek ye the lord while he may be found call ye upon him while he is near because right now the Lord is near unto us, man, through his Holy Spirit, the Comforter, right? Right now we can call upon the Lord. Right now we can seek the Lord. We have his word, right? But whenever the grid goes down, whenever you can't get on YouTube or your audio Bible, you can't get on your phone, you can't go to the grocery store, the supermarket, or any of these damn fast food chains, right? And you, you, you can't play the you can't serve these american gods anymore hey then it's too late because the most high is going to withdraw himself man the most high is going to withdraw uh, the ability to access him man and the, hey, the lord told us look if you wait until it's too late he's not gonna hear you man you're gonna cry to him and he's not gonna hear you let me get there real quick and we're gonna come back to this right Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse number 22. It says, How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. And these scriptures is the knowledge that is going to save us in these last days. It's not how you can, you know, become the next uh, uh, wolf of Wall Street. It's not how you can become the next CEO of Walmart. It's not, you know, how you can bag the most women. It's not how you can get the most money, man. Hey, knowledge is right here in these scriptures because this is what is going to save us in these last days. Let's keep going. It says, turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you and I will make known my words unto you. So all we have to do, man. Is turn to the Lord. And he said he's going to make his words known to you. He's going to let you know what you need to do. Plain and simple. If you truly love God, you turn to him. You seek him. And he's going to make his words known to you. Let's keep going. 
verse 24 because i have called and you refused i have stretched out my hand and no man regarded you don't want to be those israelites who know that you're uh, that you're a child of god that you know you're children of israel but when the most high is trying to get your attention when he's calling to you telling you hey man you got to do this you got to get your act together you got to start applying these commandments you got to start seeking me but you refuse you don't want to pick up the call right you thought you, you had to figure it out you thought you knew everything man right it says but you have set at naught all my counsel and with none of my reproof because i know i know personally a lot of people you know who have come up to camp know they're the israelites we tell them hey where you been what you doing why you ain't up here with us All right they have another they have another excuse man you know when you going hey when you going to start keeping the commandments when you going to put down the blunt when you going you know start keeping the sabbath day when you oh i know man you know i know hey that's an excuse man the lord is not trying to hear an excuse as to why you're not trying to serve him and, and the key word is trying, man. Trying. Let's keep going. Verse 25 again. Proverbs 1 and 25. But you have set at naught all my counsel and with none of my reproof. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. Hey, and that's a scary thing, man. Whenever, you know, you were taking your time. And like I said, it does take time. But what I mean is you were taking your time thinking that you had time to get right. And that's the thing. We don't have time to get right. We got to get right right now, today. But that takes putting forth the effort. And what I mean, it takes time. It takes time to start really doing it to a level of comfortability in which you know what you need to be doing. But the thing is, you need to be seeking out what you need to do in order to know what you need to do. You have to seek it out first, right? It just like you know main thing is like keeping keeping the feast days that's gonna take some time you know um maybe coming out to camp building yourself up in the spirit that's gonna take some time again i've already given examples but the thing is it's, it's no excuse as to why you're not trying though why you're not cutting out sin when you know it's a sin you know uh let's go back to isaiah 55 Isaiah 55 and 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. It says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. So the Most High, man, look, he's over merciful, man. And what I mean is, hey, he's, he's full of mercy and compassion and long-suffering toward his people, man, toward his children. But guess what? You have to return to him, right? That's what the Lord is looking for. Come back to the Most High, and he will heal you. Yeah, it might take some time for that healing to, to, to run its course, but you will be healed. You will be restored. But you have to return to the Lord and forsake your wicked ways, man. You have to put off the old man, but it might take some time. But as long as you are putting forth that effort and you are sincere and you are you're being faithful, man, that's what the Lord is looking for. Right. In the book of Judges, chapter five and verse 11, which I'm going to roughly paraphrase, it says that we, you know, are to rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. And that's what we're doing, man. This thing is a rehearsal. Right? We are in this flesh. We are subject to sin. We were conceived in sin. Right? Shaping in iniquity. Like it says in Psalm 51. Right? Everything that we've known since we were a jit, you know, has been lies. Let me get that in the book of Luke real quick. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 5. Luke chapter 5 and verse number 37. And it reads, And no man put new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. So 
This is the new one, right? This is the new person that you're supposed to become when you sincerely start seeking the Lord. You're supposed to put off that person that you were once in the world who, you know, just didn't care and were moving according to the lusts of the flesh and the lusts of this world. But when you come into the knowledge of the Lord by seeking him, you become new, right? Refreshed, born again. Right, but you can't mix the two. You can't mix the world with everlasting life and salvation and righteousness, man. You can't mix death and life. Right, good and dark. You can't. It just doesn't mix. There's, it's, they're two polar opposite things. Right, they are, you know, uh, uh, they're polar opposites. Right, but let's keep going. Verse thirty-nine. It reads. No man also, having drunk old wine, straightway desireth new, for he saith the old is better. Right? For he saith the old is better. And that's the main reason that a lot of our people aren't willing to take that next step. Because y'all think that the old man, the way that you've been taught, the comfortable lies, the sweet little lies, it, it just feels so good. And you're just so accustomed to it that, hey, it's just better for you. That's what you think, right? That's what you think. But it said again, you know, um, no man also having drunk old wine straightway desire it new. So you're not automatically, like I said, going to stop being the biggest drug dealer on the block to, you know, passing out flyers on the highways and byways, man. You're not going to do it automatically. But does that mean you can't do it? No. It means you build yourself up in the spirit. You pour out that old wine that you were drunken by, right? And you get the new wine. And then you start filling up your cup, which is symbolic for you. You you, pour, you cast off the old man, right? You cast off the drug dealer. You cast off the weed. You cast off the vapes. You cast off the fornications. You cast off um, all these abominations and the pork, the shrimp, the crab, the lobster. You get to your fringes. You start keeping a Sabbath day, right? You start reading the scriptures every day. You start throwing up multiple prayers a day. Next thing you know, man, you're on the block with the prophets, with the servants of the Lord, right? That's how you start filling up your cup with new wine, right? Over time, the Lord will start to give you an increase once he sees you're sincere, man. That's what it says in the book of Syrah. Let me get that real quick. In the book of Syrah, chapter 6, I believe. Sirach chapter 6. Let's see. Come on. This is the book of Sirach chapter 6 and verse 18. And it reads, My son, gather instruction from thy youth up, so shalt thou find wisdom till thine old age. So this is twofold because when you're a child, you're supposed to you know, soak in all the knowledge and the game that you receive from your parents, from elders. Right. But it's also on another fold talking about when you first come into the truth. Right. You're supposed to gather the instruction. So whenever you watch people on YouTube, like the elders in the, in the uh, congregation of Watchmen for Israel or like any other congregation that your spirit might resonate with or somebody who you learn from. Right. You're supposed to gather that instruction. You take heed to it. You start applying it. Right. It says. And, and so shalt thou find wisdom till thine old age. So then you're going to start, hey, this is going to get easier for you, right? Let's keep going. Verse 19, it says, Come unto her as one that ploweth and soweth, and wait for her good fruits. For, sh for thou shalt not toil much in laboring about her, but thou shalt eat of her fruits right soon. So once you start coming into the faith, and the knowledge, you start actually applying and seeking the Lord, you're in wisdom, you're in instruction and knowledge, right? Hey, the Lord said, hey, you start putting your hand to the plow and you're going to reap the fruits of it, of wisdom. Hey, what does it say? Right soon. An example, you know, I'll use myself as an example. Though I be ashes and dust and, you know, less than vanity. You know, when I first came into the truth, 
hey man, you know, I was, you know, smoking, etc., doing all manner of wickedness, you know, but I was seeking the Lord. I was seeking the Lord and I put down the weed, put down the drugs, etc., right? And the Lord started dealing with me on another level as far as just me being in the spirit. And me and the brothers that I was with at the time, um, you know, we, we just were reading. We were watching the videos, the elders. We we're getting our wisdom. We we're getting the knowledge. We we're getting the understanding. We we're getting the breakdowns. We we're drinking up all the milk, that new wine. We we're drinking, you know, or we we're eating honey, right? Then we start, you know, getting into deeper things like the meat, the potatoes, man. You know, we we're getting full course meals from the scriptures, man. And, and you know, within like three months, we are on the block confounding everything, man. That these Christians, that these Edomites, that these wicked gainsayers and naysayers have to come with. But it's because that's what the Lord said he's going to do with his people in the last days. He said, out of the mouth of babes, he has ordained strength. Right? The Lord said that he has chosen the foolish of this world to confound the wise, man. Right, meaning he chose the person who was once a drug dealer, once an addict, once a drunkard, once a fornicator, once a damn a murderer or a thief. Those are the ones that the Lord has chosen to be vessels to uh, push forth his truth, man. To confound those that be wise in this world, who people look at as someone with notoriety or highly esteemed, right? Like, you know, people who people look at in, in a high regard today, whether it be celebrity, whether it be a, a, a wealthy person, you get my gist. But nevertheless, let's keep reading, right? Uh, Sirach chapter 6 and verse 20. She is very unpleasant, talking about wisdom. She is very unpleasant to the unlearned. So if you're not learned in the scriptures, you're not going to understand wisdom, man. Let's keep going. She is very unpleasant to the unlearned. He that is without understanding will not remain with her. So you have to get understanding by getting in these scriptures. It's just plain. You have to seek the Lord in order to understand the Lord in order to obtain wisdom. Let's keep going. It says she will lie upon him as a mighty stone of trial. And he will cast her far from him ere it be long. So when you first come in, you start seeking the Lord. You start trying to keep these precepts. You start trying to apply the commandments. Hey, man, you're going to get tried with diverse things. right? You, you might stumble upon something in the scripture that you don't understand and you give up. Or you might get ridiculed or made fun of by a peer, a family member, or a co-worker, and you give up. You can't give up when it comes to God. You can't give up when it comes to the Lord, right? If you're sincere in this thing, you're going you're gonna to have that integrity. You're going to endure to the end. You're going to try to serve the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind, and you're not going to stop, period. Nobody or nothing can get in the way of what you believe in, and that's what you got to understand. If you believe in it, you're not going to let nothing stop you, man. You're not going to let nothing come between what you between what you believe in right and if you believe in the most high if you believe in his son Yahweh Shai you know then you're not gonna let nobody nothing no demon no wicked Edomite no wicked spouse no no affliction no trial no tribulation no persecution no nothing get between you and the Lord man and you wanting to please God because that's what you believe in. Because you believe in pleasing the Lord is going to obtain you favor from the Lord, which is going to get you salvation from the Lord. Right? Let's keep going. It says, For wisdom is according to her name, and she is not manifest unto many. Right? So the Lord isn't manifest unto many. Meaning she's not made known unto many. The Lord said, Many are called, but few shall be saved. But that's the thing. That's why I said a lot of our people, they know that they Israel, right? 
we go out to the highways and byways and we tell our people all the time, you know, you Israelite? Yeah. Well, well brother, what you doing, man? It's a Sabbath day. Hey, sis, you know, you, you, you were Israelite? Oh, yeah, we the Jews. Well, what the hell is you wearing? You got booty shorts on and a crop top, man, with your breasts hanging out. Right? We have to do better. We have to apply these scriptures, seek understanding, and the Lord will give us wisdom. Right? Let's continue. It goes on to say, Give ear my son, receive my advice, and refuse not my counsel. Again, we, we read earlier in the book of Proverbs what's going to happen to those that refuse the Lord's counsel. Right? You're going to cry, cry, cry to him and he's not going to listen to you, man. He's going to laugh at your calamity. Let's keep going. It says, uh, And put thy feet into her fetters and thy neck into her chain. Bow down thy shoulder and bear her and be not grieved with her bonds. So whenever you come into wisdom, it's, it's going to be like you have fetters and chains on you. Things that are restraining you. Things that are you know, keeping you kind of you know, in line. What what is a fe fetters are are shackles, right? They're they're pretty much chains, like prison chains, right? That's what it's gonna be like for you when you start seeking wisdom, because why? Because you're going to have to come in and follow a code of ethics, or really just the laws of God, which comes with, you know, thou shalt not, meaning you can't do this anymore, you can't do that anymore, you have to do this, you have to do that, but it's easy. But for the unlearned, for those who are new to this, for those who are drunken off that old wine, it's going to take a little time. But you have to bear her, like it said. It said what? It said, uh, Salakia. It says, And put thy feet into her fetters, and thy neck into her chain. Bow down thy shoulder, and bear her, and be not grieved with her bonds. Because those are bonds of righteousness. Those are bonds of purification, of perfection, right? These bonds are going to keep you in, in, in straits to keep you from sin. It's going to bind up your flesh and your fleshly and wicked desires so that you are prevented from doing that. So that you can understand, look, you know, these, these chains are actually starting to feel comfortable, right? These fetters are actually, you know, I can get down with it. Right? And that's you conforming to the image of the Lord. That's you getting down with the word of God for and seeing it's for your detriment. I mean, it's, it's for your benefit. Because when, when you're in the bonds of wisdom, when you're in her fetters, when you're in her in her chains, you start to notice that you're healing. Right. Those open sores and those grievous wounds that, that you were getting while you were out in the world, when you were destroying yourself. Hey, all of a sudden, once you're bound up by wisdom, you, you're being healed from all of that. And now you're starting to see things for what they truly are. You're having revelations. The Lord's showing you visions. He's giving you dreams. Right? You're getting more understanding of, of who the Most High is and your, what your purpose is. And all of a sudden, you know, these chains and, and these, these fetters of iron from wisdom, they, they're starting to feel real good. Right? Let's keep reading. It says, uh, verse 26. I'm going to start, I'm going to read 25 again. It says, bow down thy shoulder and bear her and be not grieved with her bonds. Come unto her with thy whole heart and keep her ways with all thy power. Search and seek. I'm going to read that again. It said, search and seek and she shall be made known unto thee. And when thou hast got hold of her, let her not go. So all of a sudden, now it's like she don't got you bound up. Now, you, you're trying to bind her up. You're trying to keep her to yourself, man. You're not trying to let her go anymore. You have to search and seek, though, because it's going to start get, feeling so good. You just It's going to get to a point where you can't get enough, man. That's what will, I, I promise you. That's what will begin to happen. Let's keep going. It says, um, For at the last thou shalt find her rest, and that shall be turned to thy joy. Then shall her fetters be a strong defense for thee and her chains a robe of glory. You see that? It says, uh, for there is a golden ornament upon her and her bands are purple lace. So, again, those, those fetters and those chains, they're going to become, you know, weapons for you to use. And also 
they're going to become glorious chains and it's going to it said it's going to become like a like a golden ornament with a and a purple lace which is symbolic for royalty right someone of high degree let's keep going it says thou shalt put her on as a robe of honor and shalt put her about thee as a crown of joy my son if thou wilt thou shalt be taught and that's the thing if you will do you have the will to serve the lord do you have it in you to want to do right by god and not just right by yourself man not just right by your flesh right don't let your flesh control you and take you away from your god given purpose and for what and from what the lord has in store for you right he says my son if thou will thou shall be taught and if thou will apply thy mind thou shall be prudent right apply your mind to something other than the damn video games and you know netflix man apply your mind to god and you will be prudent I meaning you're gonna be wise it says if thou love to hear thou shalt receive understanding if thou buy it's like you and if thou bow thine ear thou shalt be wise right here and another another key point right here so like you this whole thing is good really it says stand in the multitude of elders and cleave unto him that is wise so get you some elders get you some people that are learned and studied and seasoned right and you will be wise right be ever at their footsteps ready to learn ready to hear gathering instruction right you know but you know there, there's a, there's a lot that goes into it but the lord said you know knock and he will answer seek and you shall find the lord is ready to open open his door onto you man he's ready to fill you with the wisdom and the good fruits that this this word provides man he's ready to heal you from all of your infirmities mentally physically spiritually man he's ready to give you the kingdom israel right but we have to seek the Lord and we have to do it fast because, like I said, it's going to take time to, you know, become comfortable with it. But we don't got a lot of time left. Right. We're in the last days. <laughs> look at what's going on in the earth. Right. You know, so but like I said, the Lord is looking for those who are ready to serve him in sincerity and in truth. Doesn't mean you're going to have it all figured out. But what that looks like is you seeking God. Right. With all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind, man. And you start trying to apply these commandments to the best of your ability, man. But with that, I want to give again all praises, honor and glory unto the most high God, Yahweh. With that, I say, Shalom.